Hello, welcome to another video. Today I have some garage door opener infrared beam sensor detector sender thingies. So what these are is a the little boxes you see down uh, near the floor on your garage door opener. I'll put some photos in here. And one of these is an emitter, as it says on the board right here. And one of these is a detector. And so this is actually sending a signal out across so when somebody walks through while the door is trying to close, it won't let the door close. And I have it uh, torn down already. And here's just the two, the two circuit boards. And I'm going to go ahead and turn them on and demonstrate a little bit of their operation. So you can see right away, we have a little green LED here. And there's a little green LED lighting up over here. And we can see we're using about uh, 18, 18 or so milli milliamps and I have about eight volts going in. I have a 150 ohm resistor right here. So you, you could set different voltages, but you'd have to change this resistor value to get it to, to operate. This is, this is operating in what's known as a, uh, a current loop. So these two devices are in parallel with each other and they will change the current based on, um, how, uh, how much it senses basically. So this is an analog sensed value. So I can affect this by covering this value up, covering up the sensor over here. So if we start to shield this, you'll see that light starts to fade. And if I move it away a little bit, it goes out. So we can make this detect. And you see we're using about 18, 19 milliamps, and then I can make it not detect by shielding it from the emitter. And now we're using 14 milliamps. So the garage door opener is detecting that difference in current to tell it whether the door path is blocked or not blocked and we can see we're operating at about 149 150 hertz um, that's the oscillating frequency of this module over here but it's actually operating at a much higher frequency so it has it's actually using two different frequencies at once so i have uh, some paper i'm going to go over a little bit what's going on so the basics we have our garage door opener infrared beam reverse engineering explanation. Uh, we have our opener controller. This has a constant voltage output. We have our resistor and it has a sensing line. It's coming back in. So it's sensing the voltage drop across that resistor effectively, which is going to change based on how much current we're using. Well, the first thing that's happening here is we have our, these two devices are connected in parallel and there's a voltage across these devices. So this thing's sending out it's, it's light wave, which is an infrared beam. And there's a little lens in there that helps to focus that. It's not necessarily for the interference though. We'll see why that is in a minute. And the detector on the other side picks up that beam. And as long as it detects it, the current actually stays higher. And that tells this thing that it's happy and it can open and close without any issues. So this is the current sense loop. And so we can see here, we have a current meter. So this is our setup right now. So we have a power supply, current meter, 150 ohm resistor, the emitter, the detector, our frequency counter, or an oscilloscope. And uh, so let's take a look at these circuit boards next. And then we're going to show the schematic for them. So we'll get the detector first. So here's a shot of that. I'll put some higher resolution images up while we talk about this. And so you can see, this is a pretty simple circuit. There's only a couple transistors, and it actually has an integrated uh, detector module right there. So that's doing a lot of the work of detecting the signal. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot to that one. The next board is the emitter and this is doing a little bit more work. And so I have, I tacked a couple wires on the bottom of this just to, to be able to look at the, the wave shape, uh, that this is actually generating. So you can see it just has a, a standard infrared led and then it just has a regular led to tell you it's got power. Um, so this LED will always stay on. So when you connect the emitter, that light should come on right away, whether or not the other device is present or not present. If you don't see that one green light, then you know that your emitter is not getting power and not working. So on the back, you can see we got a few more components. Um, one transistor, which is our driver transistor for our infrared LED. And then there is a dual comparator. So this is an LM2903. It's a very standard package and it's being used to make two oscillators. 
So when we look at the scope capture for this, we see that there's a primary oscillation at 150 hertz, which is what we were seeing on our frequency counter. But when we zoom in, it looks like there's a little, there's a really wide burst on the scope. You'll see that the little, the line is kind of wide. What happens is when we zoom in on that, we see that it's actually oscillating around 40 kilohertz. So this has two oscillators in it. One oscillator is working at 40 kilohertz and the other one's working at 150 hertz. And both of those are being sent out through this infrared LED. And there's a reason why they do that. If they didn't have some kind of encoded signal on here, it would be susceptible to all kinds of interference. So imagine every time you opened your garage door, the sunlight shines in. Well, that's got infrared in it. So that infrared light, would set the detector off so it would never know if somebody's crossing the beam or not. So that's why this has to have some kind of encoding and this has to look for that encoding. So this is looking for that 150 hertz and 40 kilohertz signal to tell it that the signal's actually there. And this is emitting a more complicated signal than just static light. So that way it's not fooled by just ambient light that's around. All right, let's take a look at the schematics. So first things first, we have our, our detector. So it's a pretty interesting circuit. That uh, signal detected uses about five milliamps. Uh, when the signal's not detected, it uses less than one milliamp. That's, those are approximate numbers. It might be a little more than that. Um, I got the parts list over here. So if you wanted to kind of re rebuild this, you could. I don't know what this, this integrated detector is, but I'm assuming it's just any kind of generic in integrated uh, detector. So this circuit over here is doing some, some basics and what happens is, is this, this transistor over here effectively shorts out this side of the rail, which will actually light up this LED over here. And so if this doesn't ever get a signal, this never turns on, and therefore this LED can never light up because the current will actually flow through this other diode right here. So when it detects a signal, this thing is turning on and off over here, which does create some AC signal, which allows this LED to turn on and conduct. In a normal circumstance, only this diode is conducting, and therefore the LED does not turn on. So when the signal's detected, uh, this PNP and then NPN transistor here will switch this rail over here on and off, allowing this LED to turn on. And then the next part is the emitter, which is significantly more complicated. You can see there's quite a lot more going on there. So we have the oscillates at 150 hertz with bursts of 40 kilohertz, which we see on the scope. We have the, the dual comparator, and then it uses about 12 milliamps continuously. And we can see over here, our LED that's on the inlet is connected directly across. So this just expects um, that input voltage or current to be available and turn this on right away. And then that's gonna go through your, through a diode and a capacitor here. So this is just the power supply for this, the rest of the circuitry. This emitter, which is the infrared LED, is being switched by this transistor in a 6.2 ohm resistor. Um, so this would actually be kind of biased at some point. Um, and then it looks like it actually pulls it down through these two oscillators over here. So these are our oscillator sections, um, one operating at a higher frequency and one operating at a lower frequency. And I uh, didn't do too much more on that, but that, that's the basics of how this circuit works. So that's about it. That's the basics of how these little um, detectors work. And they're pretty universal because they are just using that current loop. So any one of these emitter detector pairs that uses a current loop would be compatible as long as the infrared that they share is in the same frequency band. So if you had one of these that operated at 200 hertz and 80 kilohertz, this detector probably won't be able to find that signal and therefore it won't work. Um, I'm not sure how exclusive this is or how wide the frequency is on this. This one's, you know, uh, it does actually have some more precision components like this capacitor right here, this little film capacitor, that's gonna be a higher precision capacitor specifically used for the oscillator to make sure that this stays stable uh, within reason. All right. So that's a little rundown of these, these devices. That's how they work and that's what they do. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.